for ages. Uh, he's with Tech Flash. Before that, he was uh, Seattle PI, and he's basically just a fixture on the Seattle tech news scene. And he's here to talk about Seattle's geek history. Please give a warm welcome to Todd Bishop. So I am the one of the guys who started Tech Flash, the tech news site here in Seattle. And the great thing about our jobs is that we get to tell the stories of the people in the Seattle region's technology community. And the story I'd like to tell you tonight starts at this nondescript home. This is in suburban Bellevue, just on the other side of 405. Now, it's at the end of a long, winding road, and you would not notice this house if you drove by it, except for one thing. And that thing is this gigantic mailbox out by the curb, two or three times the size that it needs to be. Now, the guy who rented this place in the 1990s needed all that extra space for the book catalogs he was receiving, for the index he was building, for the website that he was developing. This is the birthplace of Amazon.com. Now, the garage that Jeff Bezos was using at the time has since been converted into this living room, but from the mind of the guy who occupied this space in the world came one of the most influential technology ventures of our time. This is one of the stops on our Geek's Guide to Seattle. And my colleagues, John Cook and Eric Engelman and I you know, we realize Seattle has tours for just about everything. You, know, you can tour coffee houses, you can tour the underground, you can do whatever the hell those duck things are. <laughs> what about us geeks? Where is our heritage? Where are we supposed to go to find out where in our region we come from? This was our quest. Now, if you only go to one place on this map, I want to send you down to the southwest corner. Just north of Boeing Field, this is the Museum of Communications. And the great thing about this place is that the, te the technology actually works. You can actually make a phone call. <laughs> you can make a phone call from the routing system that you would see if the PowerPoint would work. And oh. You're amazing. Are there bylaws in Ignite about her? <laughs> <laughs> the power is Actually, if you do go to the Museum of Communication, I'm just going to take the time like a senator. Yeah. If you do go to the Museum of Communication, <laughs> in fact, it's, it's actually amazing because the guys there are actually old Bell technicians who are working on the stuff in front of you. It is an amazing place. Yeah. And, no, I'm serious. And the, the, the thing about it is, they, they've got little telegraph and teletype machines, and you can actually see them working on it in front of you. And, and it's just, it's, it's really a, a good place. Um, and I'm not sure exactly where to go from here, guys. <laughs> this is the revenge of Bill Gates, because I did do this in PowerPoint, and I have written many, many stories about Bill Gates over the years. <laughs> and I would bet. I've got a heckler. This is great. Hi, Will. Okay. So. This switching system, you can see the call going through it. 
I mean, I know that's remarkable for some of us nowadays. I was half tempted to tether my iPhone to the thing. <laughs> Teletype machines, telegraphs, just think about this the next time you complain about only having 140 characters to work with. <laughs> Across town, there's another great place. This is the Reed PC Computer Museum. Now, the technology here actually is not running, but for anybody who grew up in the 1970s and 80s, this is a stroll down memory lane. I think that's my old TRS-80 Model 2 right over there. Right? <laughs> The places on the map that are the, tr the true gems are the ones that speak to Seattle's unique spot in technology history. The original home of homegrocer.com, one of the first sites to link the digital and the physical worlds through an online service. Mercer Hall East, the birthplace of livejournal.com, long before Mark Zuckerberg, Brad Fitzpatrick learned that if you want to launch a successful social network, you spend a few months in a dorm room. <laughs> Wilcox Hall across the UW campus. This is where Paul Allen and Bill Gates snuck in late at night to learn how to program. More than Albuquerque or Harvard or Lakeside School, this was the birthplace of Microsoft's hacker culture. And of course, if you're talking about Microsoft landmarks, you cannot avoid this place. This is the Burger Master in Bellevue. It was the Microsoft cafeteria when the company was around the corner in, in the 1980s. Bill Gates had this place on speed dial. And this great place on the current Microsoft campus, this is a courtyard where for many years, in the 1980s and the 1990s, the company would place plaques for every product that it shipped, large and small. It even went back retroactively and placed plaques for things that it shipped long ago. And of course, as we all know from the days of BASIC and the Altair, Microsoft went on to develop some of the most landmark technology products of our time. <laughs> I'm actually kind of surprised that he's still there. But the only thing missing is that here lies across the top. <laughs> but in truth, of course, there truly were some landmark products released in this era. Uh, for those of us who were paying attention at the time, this was the iPhone of its day. We lined up around the block for this thing, and it changed the way that many of us looked at our computers. Those are just a few of the stops on our Geek's Guide to Seattle. <coughs> this is why we love covering technology in a place like this. Amazing things happen here, and we know that it's true because we've documented them here on this map. Now, we also have an interactive version of the map where you can go and add your own locations, but what we're truly interested in seeing are the places that the people in Seattle's technology community, which means you, the people in this room, add to this map through the work that you do and the ideas that come out of your own heads in the years and the decades to come. Thank you. And the award for grace under technical mishap goes to Todd Bishop. Thank you, Todd.